Hello friends, today in this video we will discuss about how to count the number of chromosomes in mitosis. So before going to details, let us discuss about what is chromosomes. So chromosomes are usually a tightly coiled structure of DNA, which means that being very large in size around 1.5 meter is not able to fit within the nucleus of a cell. Now for this DNA to fit inside a nucleus, it needs to be packaged into a tightly coiled structure. Okay so that it can fit inside a cell so for that to happen there are several proteins which are present within the nucleus such as histones now this histones forms octomers and wrap around dna and finally package them into a very tightly called structures known as chromosomes now each chromosomes contains two sister chromatids okay now these two copies are genetically identical and they contain a telomere at their end, a centromere through which both of them are attached. Okay, so at times this chromosome exists as a, a single chromatid, and at times it contains both the chromatids. So usually during G1 phase, the chromosome usually exists as a single chromatid. In this case, we can see a chromatid with centromere at the center and a telomere at both ends now this centromere help us to calculate the number of chromosomes for example after replication occur this sister chromatid or this chromatid will act as a template to produce a identical copy of this chromatid now when these two chromatid are attached itself through a single centromere the number of chromosomes not get changed because we have said that we count the number of chromosomes by the number of this functional centromere presence. So after the replication, when the sister chromatid produces an identical copies of, of it, both the chromatids attached to each other through a functional centromere. Now this functional centromere in this case also one, but in this case the chromosome contains two chromatid the amount of DNA gets double. So after replications, the chromosome number is not changed, but the chromatid number gets doubled and also the amount of DNA also gets double. So before going to describe about the mitosis, how the chromosome number changes, let us discuss about a cell cycle. So the cell cycle usually contains of four different ways, G1 as G2 and mitosis. So in G1 phase, the cell attains its maximum size and it also prepares itself for the next phases. In S phase, the DNA is replicated so that, so here we can see in S phase, after replication, the number of chromosome is same but the amount of DNA is doubled. Okay, the amount of DNA is doubled, the number of chromatid is also doubled. Okay, after S phase comes the G2 phase. So in this G2 phase, the cell itself prepare for the mitosis, which is which will ultimately leads to the division of cells to produce daughter cells. Okay, so the cells move from G2 to mitosis, and in mitosis, the cell itself produce a new daughter cells. So here, there are four different phases: prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So after undergoing all these phases, the cell undergoes cytokinesis to produce daughter cells with, with identical DNAs. So here we can see, before going to mitosis, the cells usually contains uh, chromosomes with two chromatids. Okay. So let us discuss about the different phases of mitosis and how the chromosome number we can count in those different phases. So in prophase, here we can see the number of chromosomes are you can count the functional centromere 1, 2, 3 and 4. So the number of centromere is 4. So the number of chromosome will also be 4. Now each chromosomes contains two sister chromatid so number of chromatid here will be four 
into 2 equals to 8 okay so for prophase number of chromosome is 4 and number of chromatid is your 8 again in the next phase in metaphase these chromosomes al will align themselves in a pole so here the number of chromosomes and the chromatid doesn't get changes so in this case also the number of chromosome will be 4 and the number of chromatid will also be same 8 in the next phase we can see that in anaphase now this chromosome which contains these two chromatid in this case is separated that means now in each cases the each chromatid will have its own functional centromere so after separation we will find that the number of functional centromere will be 1 2 3 4 4 here and 4 here so total 8 so 8 number of chromosomes and the number of chromatid will be again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so number of chromatid here will also be the same the 8 so the number of chromosome in anaphase gets changed because the chromosomes which previously contains two sister chromatid now in this case will only contain one sister chromatid so each chromatids get separated now one chromosome will divided into two sister chromatids now each sister chromatid contain its own centromere so four chromosome was previously present in this case four chromosome has been divided into eight chromosome because each chromosome which contains two chromatid is divided into two individual chromatid okay now in the last phase again in telophase now uh, the cell will be preparing itself for cytokinesis which means after this dna molecules has been distributed into two daughter cells the cell will ultimately produce two different cells okay so two different cells will be produced and they are genetically identical so the number of chromosomes again become four after the cytokinesis in both the cells because in each cells we can see that one two three four chromosomes and the chromatid will also be the four and again in the other daughter cells again we can see the four cent functional centromere one two three four so the number of chromatid and chromatin after the cytokinesis is your four four while in that telophase it will be as same as anaphase okay so this was telophase in case of telophase you can we can see that there are eight so in telophase we can see here there are eight chromosomes one two three four five six seven eight so and number of chromatid is also eight but after cytokinesis when this will be split into two cells the number of chromosome in each cell will be four and just because here each chromosomes only contain a single chromatid so the number of chromosome will be equal to the number of chromatid 4 and 4 and here also the same case will happen 4 and 4 so the number of chromosomes and chromatid changes along the each phase and many questions comes from this portion in CSIR gate so please try to understand and I hope you have understood the concept so if you have understood please like and don't forget to subscribe thank you